So, how are you doing? I am doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm going morning, coming in the evening. That's all. That's life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it's quite cold over here. It's uh, snowing in Montana right now, but um, we are inside, so it's. Oh, it's good. So you enjoying the snow? It's yeah, yeah. Here. Yes, I'm enjoying the snow. Oh. Oh. So I wanted to uh, um, pick your brain on the certification schemes, basically, because I heard your talk at uh, NDE 2018, and um, um, it is getting okay. a little bit confusing for me and uh, a few of my students as well. So I wanted to get some clarification on, like, how many um, certification schemes are there right now that are. Uh, you know that are worth looking into i mean i know every country might have their own certification scheme national scheme and then there is this uh, okay. big ones like asnt pcn uh, and then recently i've been hearing about iso 9712 uh, certification scheme and then uh, ask me asme also has their uh, launched their own certification scheme so what what are what are we supposed to do <laughs> like which certification schemes are we um, supposed to uh, learn and the benefits and pros and cons of each one if you can tell us in short there are three kind of certification available uh, in the market yeah one is first party second party and third party so the concept of first party has come from asnt american society for non destructive testing and most of the people say it uh, employer based certification also and it has been written down through a document which uh, we call SNTTC 1A. So where the employer has the liberty to certify its own people and uh, obviously no need to say that they have to follow certain guideline which is mentioned in uh, SNTTC 1A. So that's about uh, uh, first party certification. When we talk about uh, second party certification, so it's a usually, <clears throat> An, an organization, it is uh, usually given by an organization uh, which uh, is not the manufacturer or the parent organization where the employees are working. Okay. So, like uh, there are some institutes uh, uh, where uh, they have their own practice. While using the own practice of uh, organization A, if a B organization is uh, uh, working for entity, and such kind of certification is called second party certification. Okay. So okay. now uh, when we talk about third party certification, usually it's a central certification uh, uh, scheme. And uh, most of the time this is either driven at national level or international level. So here I can give some example like ACCP. It's a American uh, certification. And uh, ISO 9712 and uh, mostly uh, in the world people follow ISO 9712 when it comes for third party certification. So where a centrally organized uh, organization uh, take the responsibility of training and examination and uh, uh, they certify individual uh, that uh, that individual has met uh, uh, the required criteria mentioned there in, in, in certification uh, scheme. So, so uh, in, in these uh, first party, second party, third party, where do the training institutes fall into, like uh, private training organizations? Um, with, when they train students, freshers, new students, what are they? Are they first party, second party, or third? They're not first party, but they're second party or third party? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll, I'll come to uh, this question. Okay. Well, you know, uh, they, uh, when uh, they are giving the certification as per centrally certifying body, like a uh, 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 scheme, uh, we call it ISO 9712. Okay. Then they come as a third party certification. I see. But when they follow their own uh, practice, own written practice, which is based on the SNTTC 1A, and they certify them, then this is called second party uh, certification okay i see yeah. 
so it is possible for training is private training institutes to be to offer the training as per the central certification scheme as well so uh, yes okay so um what about pcn where does pcn fall into these three uh, yes actually pcn is personal certification for non destructive testing which okay. is driven by the BIND, BIND, the British Institute, British Institute for Non-Destructive Testing, and uh, PCN is a certifying body as per ISO nine seven one two. So they oh, okay. give the certificate. If if you if you uh, see the PCN certificate, so it's a uh, uh, they have written that individual uh, candidate has met the criteria of ISO nine seven one two. So PCN actually gives the certificate as per ISO nine seven one two scheme. Okay. So so yeah. a training institute that has the is the AQB the authorized qualifying body and the authorized testing body for PCN they they become the third party certification. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, each certifying body like BNDT they have to be qualified as ISO one seven zero two four. So one z one zero one seven one zero two four. Okay. So uh, in most of the country, they have their own individual certifying body. Right. Uh, in India, it's a uh, uh, ISNT. Yeah. Yes, they are they, they are launching in India. It's a ASNT. In, in ASNT, US. In US, sorry. Yeah. In US, it's a ASNT, and they uh, give the certificate of. Uh, as per ACCP, so that is that will be considered as per uh, equivalent to ISO nine seven one two certificate. Future onwards. Okay, I see. So they're incorporating the ISO into ASN. Now, when when that happens, do the existing level threes from ACCP uh, uh, ASNT have to retest based on the ISO uh, requirements? Uh, actually, uh, they are in the process and. Uh, uh, it seems uh, whatever the information I have from ASNT that uh, they have to apply and they have to meet certain criteria of experience, qualifications. Once they meet the uh, criteria, ACCP uh, certified persons will be qualified as per ISO 9712 as well. Okay, so there won't be any testing involved. It, the requirements will be for the uh, experience requirements basically. Exactly. And, and uh, if you see the codes, like if I give you the example of ASME, which is widely used in US and India, so they have started mentioning any national and international certifying body. So if it is ACCP, they accept that. If this is ISO 9712, they accept that. But uh, when people started talking, that when already ISO 9712 is available, then why to go for ACCP? So ACT came uh, with the idea that uh, in future onwards it will be equivalent to ISO 9712. Okay, I see. Yeah. So uh, one of the basic questions I have is: Let's say there's a student who is getting into NDT right now, beginning start, mm -hmm. um, and they are, they have all these choices, uh, different mm -hmm. schemes. So what is the best uh, way to get certified in NDT? Is it is it better to get uh, go to a training institute that offers uh, ISO 9712 training uh, or PCN or now even a so uh, ASNT training or is it better to join an employer and then employers prefer to train them as per SNTTC 1A? Actually, it's a very uh, tricky question. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to simplify this. Uh, if a candidate wants to work independently, then uh, this third party certification should be his choice. Okay, if and the candidate wants to work independently. Okay. Independently. Then third party certification should be his obvious choice. I see. But if a person wants to work in a specific organization and that organization has got a good name, good trainers, good facility uh, for examination, then uh, first party certification is good. So here, the choice of career where individual candidate is going uh, should be the criteria to opt uh, one of these. Okay, I see. Um, and as far as from the employer side is concerned, let's say I'm the service company. Um, 
what should I prefer? Should I prefer to hire candidates who already have the certificates uh, from training institutes like ISO 9712 training institutes, or should I prefer to uh, have a SNTTC 1A scheme inside my organization um, and then train hire trainers and, and instructors to train my employees on that scheme? Again, uh, it depends where you are going to provide the services. If you are going to provide the services where the client requires that there must be a third party certification with the candidates who are going to work there, then obviously it should be third party. Okay. But if they give the relaxation that if you are certifying your own guys and they can work here, then first party should be the preference. Okay. So basically it depends what is the application of your service. Okay. Now, is that dependent on the region where the, the uh, technician is working? Is it like in Europe, this is the rule or in India, this is the rule or in US, this is the rule or is it uh, again dependent on the client within the country? Yeah, it mostly depends on clients. Okay. Like, like when, when we uh, talk about India and when we talk about power industry, uh, in India, uh, there is a uh, regulation, we call it IBR, Indian Boiler Regulation. So they simply ask, the candidate must be level two. So in that case, if person is uh, from first party, person is from third party, it is immaterial to them. But when uh, we work for ASME, and uh, ASME asks us that candidate must be uh, qualified as per employer, it doesn't matter whether he is from third party, third party. Uh, or, or first party, then the choice should be uh, first party certification. Got it. So, so it, it depends on clients. Okay, got it. Makes sense. So now, um, coming to the, the newest certification scheme that I've been hearing is the ASME is coming up with uh, uh, A and D E. Uh, yes, right. So, what is that? What? What? Why did they come up with another certification scheme? Why not these centralized? Uh, what's uh, missing with these ISO nine seven one two? that they had to come up with their own? No, it's not that uh, something was missing with ISO 9712. Uh, they wanted to have their own certification scheme where the requirement uh, would be aligned to uh, ASME. Uh, when we talk about ISO 9712, they usually do not follow a specific code or a specific standard. It's worldwide. Okay. While uh, in ASME, they, ha they, they have their own requirement. And to meet their own requirement, they come up with a, a new certification scheme like A and D. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, it, it has been started. I think I lost you. Hold on, I'm not able to hear you. Yes, this is okay. It's working. Okay. Uh, so basically, it, it's uh, about the requirement. So they have introduced this uh, a and &E concept with nuclear first. Okay, I see. So now, if, you, if, yeah. if you want to work in the nuclear industry, then you need to have the ASME and uh, uh, level one and level two. No, not need to be. That is the one choice. Other okay. than person can be from ISO 9712 and person can be from, uh, you know, first party, like based, in, based on written Employer based. Yes. Okay, so now if 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 I'm a current ASNT level three, mm -hmm. and I want to become um, ASME level three, do I have to appear for the exams, or is it again just uh, experience based? Okay, uh, so basically your question is, uh, being ASNT NDT level three, can you work as a NDT level three for ASME, right? Correct. Okay, uh, here, uh, the, the first thing I would like to uh, say, ASME has adopted the terminology of NDE. So uh, in ASME, they call it NDE level three, not huh. NDT level three. So that is the uh, first part. And when uh, you are ASNT uh, NDT level three, uh, ASNT NDT level three, not ACCP, then uh, you need to have uh, certain requirement. I, I, I give you an example of those requirements. Uh, you must have the experience of uh, 
qualifying the procedures okay and uh, you must undergo with the practical examination i see and and uh, it has to be uh, administered by by the employer uh, okay yes, employer can take the uh, service from another uh, level 3 i see so now now that level 3 has to be asme uh, uh, certified level 3 asme does not uh, uh, certify anyone as asme uh, entity level 3 basically what they do they have their authorization to some organization like uh, hsb uh, hartford steam boiler so they work as a ai ai means authorized inspector inspectors okay and such organizations are called aia authorized uh, inspecting agencies okay so yeah so there uh, the uh, the nde level 3 as per asme has to perform certain tasks like demonstration and they need to qualify a procedure in uh, witness with the uh, ai then a person can be you know uh, designated as nde level 3 ah okay i see okay so uh, and that is only if the the employer wants to have projects from nuclear industries otherwise it doesn't matter right no even if in uh, no it, it for asme in all all the uh, area person must be qualified as nde level 3 it doesn't matter whether uh, he has asnt uh, ndt level 3 or iso ndt level 3 he must be certified as nde level 3 and requirement uh, has been given in uh, uh, section 5 article 1 okay 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 section so, 5 article 1 yeah okay i'll read that yeah um yeah that's a lot of information actually um so uh, can there be uh, like one last question probably can there be mm-hmm. training institutes that offer asme level 1 and level 2 or there have to be the authorized inspection agencies that only are we, talk- are we talking about uh, uh, asme on certification scheme or are we talking about yeah, the that- person who who can work for asme at nd level 3 No, I'm talking about uh, the A and D E w- uh, scheme that A- ASME has. Uh, it has level one and level two, right? Correct. So now, who uh, can can someone train for that, or they have to be um, ASNT or ISO nine seven one two level one and level two first, and then test out for ASME, or can somebody be trained directly for ASME and D E level one and two? Yes, there are both the options. If uh, you are ISO nine, if uh, individually is uh, ISO nine seven one two entity level two, then uh, after uh, having certain requirements, they can be converted into ASME entity level three. The the only part is the the administration of examination, and that uh, only certain organization uh, you know has to perform those tasks. Authority, okay. Authority, yes. Okay. okay uh i guess that's a lot of information to digest uh i will uh, restrict my questions till now and then give it a thought more if i have more questions i'll uh, definitely get in touch with you again yeah definitely we can have discussion at any point of time yeah thank you so much for your time i'll uh, i'll let you get back to whatever you're doing and i'll also yeah, get yeah. back to my work <laughs> yeah yeah thank you and uh, have a nice day thank you you too thanks bye